from it. It's exciting for us. I feel like this time there won't be surprises. Maybe, I, maybe I'm speaking too soon, but I just think Ascend are, are a little too comfy. Uh, not facing Navi in this situation, I feel like they should be even more comfortable coming into this. I, I just think it's their game to win. Uh, the only benefit for lads in this situation is I just think, you know, lads don't really have anything to lose in this series. They've gotten farther than I'm, you know, maybe than they might have expected. But at this point, uh, all they stand to gain is experience, right? Grand finals reps, they get to play at a pace of play that they probably never experienced before. I just think it's it's nothing but W's. Even if they don't take this series, it's it's a beautiful position to be in. They should take as much as they can from this opportunity. Uh, you know, that said, maybe it will be a closely contested series, but uh, but Ascend, they've just, they've dominated too many times for me to assume otherwise. It's an interesting point you raise. You know, Ascend have been on top of this hill, this mountain for a very long time, and there's been a lot of hungry teams trying to climb up after them and take them down. Isn't a case where they might be a little bit complacent here and the lads, you know, fancying their own chances against them here. But they could get they get the first game here, Aquarius CTF for how good Ascend historically have been on this game type. That could be a real trendsetter for the start of the series. Well, I mean, it was a question I asked Snipe Drone at the end of last week, wasn't it? Where I said, like, are you gonna get complacent because you just keep winning? Are you gonna just keep scrimming? Are you gonna keep playing? It seems like Ascend, they're always in matchmaking. They're scrimming when they can as well. Like they're doing what they can to stay yeah. at the very top. And we'll see whether they can do that here in the Grand Finals. Here we go then. Game one of Grand Finals time. Aquarius CTF ascend up against the lads. Camouflage in the hands of Septic. The game that no one would have predicted that would happen in the Grand Finals. But the lads, they just seem to have that confidence about them. They have that self-belief. But maybe that Ooh. belief gets shot away a little bit as... A couple of questionable BR shots mean that all four were dead for the lads temporarily and Ascend are already in the base. They're already pressuring. They're pulling that flag. Flag out then. Just about to tip over the halfway point as he takes this long way around the Dynamo nades. Getting tagged up in the back by Morgan. The Dutchman trying to put a stop to this flag and with the help of Chris Stolet, they've done just that. Legend backing off in retreat and gets a kill though on the way out. Little exit frag. Snipe Drone's going to get an extra kill just to keep this flag alive. Momentarily, I thought this flag would die, but in fact, they've gotten well over the halfway point. Set the last man to do any sort of damage on it, and now all of a sudden, Snipe Drone's got the touch on the flag, and they've got four men alive with two of the lads in the respawn screen. Flag's being sent all the way home. 1-0, just like that. Ascend, take the lead. A great effort from the lads to try and return that flag, though. They really threw everything at it, but it was just the kind of relentless pressure from Snipe Drone over towards the Dynamo side where he was reluctant to go down. He threw everything back at the lads and said, look, this is not going to be an easy return for you whatsoever. And he's still alive. Eventually gets shut down, but the lads find themselves three members in the death screen. And now Ascender looking to try and dominate once more. Again, they have the player advantage and they're pushing into the base. They're so quick with how they play this game. Lottie asked the question. Are Ascend going to be a little bit cold and maybe momentum on the side of the lads while they're showing no signs of frost here. Getting another flag touch pulled out. Going to be sent home. Nothing's going to come of it at this point, but camouflage now, Dan. Ten minutes on the clock. It could be big for one of these teams. Well, the lads are just prioritizing staying alive and getting this flag return. They've done job number one, and now it's about getting map positioning. Quadios will be rewarded, you'd think, with the camo. Just have to be careful with where he pushes. Sika might be able to spot him. Sika did spot him. But can Cordio stay alive just about for now? It's really difficult in these situations, Shirley, when you have the camouflage and you know people are looking for you and you do get seen. It's not like you're completely invisible. The camouflage is viewable from certain angles and areas. Everyone's looking in 4K, 1080p nowadays. And eventually Cordio gets shut down because of it. It looks as though the lads on Ascend had their eyes squinted and waited for that shimmer to go across their eyes. And that's exactly what they did. Cordio's tried to scamper away from his last known position but didn't get far enough. Perhaps just a little bit too predictable this time around. Ascend now, descending on the base. Cristola scampering away to try and play his life. We're gonna see Septic dive in here only to meet the battle rifle shots of Snipe Drone. Last man alive, Quadios, and he's on the en enemy side of the base. He's gonna pull a flag, but they have no problem slaying him on the way home. Yeah, he pulls a flag, but that just gives him the information that they needed, that they're gonna have a free run here. And he has died, and here's the movement from Snipe Drone. There's that curb slide. It just allows you to move with that flag so quickly and efficiently. And one thing I've always been impressed with with Ascend is how efficient they are with their flag runs. They seem to have it down to a T. 2-0 now to Ascend. And this is bad news for the lads. Because I was thinking if the lads, you know, keep it 0-0 or they get the first flag, maybe they can worry Ascend a bit. But 
2-0 is such a comfortable cushion for Ascend that they can start to slay out. They can start to really feel themselves here and make sure they are warmed up. It was all about trying to keep this game a stalemate for as long as possible to just plant the seed of doubt in the minds of the stand. They've been unable to do that though. Camouflage about to pop up again. Two of them have gone the way of lads, but unfortunately they haven't been able to do anything with it. This flag is going to be stopped for a moment, but Snipe Drone and Legend have both gotten killed. Cristola, the last man alive. We're only moments away from making this a 3-0 lead, but Cristola bursts in towards Engine and he's trying to clear house desperately as he can. Heatwave picked up, but it's not going to be able to fire a single shot in anger. Shady's moving this flag. He's got teammates on hand to relay it if he needs it. And there it is. Punch home. Two players dive in. 3-0 ascend. They're playing so good. Take your pick. Both players there ready. Just again, showing the teamwork from ascend and also every player prepared to do the dirty work to make sure that flag goes in. Not showing... Any signs of weakness here against the lads? You wouldn't have thought that the Ascend roster here had had a, a difficult time in the winner's bracket finals against Na'Vi because they look like a different side now. Maybe they just needed that wake-up call that Na'Vi provided them to say, hey, look, we can't underestimate anyone. Let's make sure we make this a quick 5-0 to show why we're the number one team in Europe. Flag out the move this time for the lads. Double kill for Septic. It's going to do his confidence the world of good. Fortunately, for Ascend though, he's going to be cut down in his tracks, but three, two members dead now. Quadios is still touching the flag, relaying it home towards top carbine, but Cristola puts some shots down, comes out on top this time around, does the Irishman, but unfortunately, Quadios is going to fumble that flag and lose his life, but they've got the back towards closet. This can do them the world of good if they can punch this one in. Is there anyone to train it in? Doesn't matter. Septic will make this at least a game, so the lad's not rolling over and showing their bellies just yet. They have got some fight in them. And if they can now take this momentum and continue with this aggression, maybe they can get a couple more flags and make a real game of it. Because I have to say that the lads were kind of throwing themselves at Ascend individually, one by one. They were trying to get Rees. They were trying to take 1v1 fights. And you can't do that against an Ascend roster that is just so individually talented. The lads need to do exactly what they did against Na'Vi. Try and take Ascend out of their comfort zone. Make sure you're pushing as a team match this aggression but make sure you're matching it as a team rather than individuals well something they are matching for the moment than the very least is slays they're not being heavily outstayed here whatsoever it's just a sender being so much more efficient with those flag grabs the lads making see. it difficult though Podios and Cristola have done very well to kind of save those flags but it's the last ditch attempts that individuals are making but it's then there's no one else to, to kind of pick up the pieces. It's all well and good being the last player and getting that kill, but the other team's going to be spawning far closer to that flag. I will say, though, the lads have done very well to at least move this flag out of the base to make it more difficult for Ascend here. They're not going to be able to get the cap. We're going to have a flag stand. Flag standoff, but one of you one engagements, two of them going in the way of Ascend. Camouflage player is going to soar into the base, though, and I love that play from Seeker, recognizing he didn't need to get the kill necessarily in his, the ways of a gunfight, but just needed to stop that push coming through. Gets a kill onto the camouflage player. Septic and Cristola, the last two left alive, trying to play defense. But here comes the ascend push. Flag should be get sent home, and we should see 4-1 the score. I think actually both flags got read, so it didn't matter. Even though the ascend committed so heavily to get the return, the camo play and the trade was enough for that return to come through. The lads then on spawn got across, got the read themselves, but look how quick ascend are to move once more to get this flag going. Two kills going in favor of Ascend. This one should be a cap. I don't think there's going to be anyone from the lads to stop it. So now it's going to be 4-1. And the lads are starting to show signs of maybe just tiring out a little bit. They have played quite a lot of Halo today. A monumental run through the loser's bracket. It was in the very first series of the day. Caught cold a little bit. By Team Twisted. But we're seeing the golfing class here, certainly in the flag game types and the flag runs. Wow. Have been so efficient by the way of Ascend. Look how quick they're able to juggle these flags all the way home. Punched it in. Game one of our grand finals goes toward Ascend and it's business as usual. I think Shyway's salivating in the background as well. YouTube videos are starting to be created because the movement we're <laughs> witnessing from Ascend is sublime. Every single flag run was pretty much flawless and the way they kind of maneuver their way around the map with the objective is definitely something that people need to be looking at and assessing and saying, okay, well, how do we do this as well as them? They're hitting all those slides correctly. They're finding the quickest routes with the flag, even 
in those environments where the other team has spawned in certain areas, so they're having to change those routes. They still find the speed with their movement and their slides. But in live fire, I mean, it does offer some ranged fights. This is where you want to just make sure you're peppering them, your team shots on, and you're not allowing Ascend to get up close and personal because Ascend, they do move as a three. And if you can find Snipe Drone, who is very often the solo player who is just anchoring at times, if you can consistently kill him, get the player advantage, and then take the rest of the Frenchies in a four versus three, you definitely have a chance to win a Slayer game type. And maybe that weapon on your screen there, the sniper rifle, could be the difference maker. We saw Septic pop off with it a little bit earlier when we were here on Live Fire, and we'll see whether we can do more of the same in game number two. And here is game number two. The keys to success from Dan. Isolate Snipe Drone and kill the Frenchies. It's quick and easy as that. And there we go. Two kills. Gonna drop for the lads. They're gonna go down or head up here, actually. Excuse me. Why a kill, but it's not for too long as it's now three to three. Opening engagements have been even, but Shady's got the sniper rifle here, Dan. In situations like that, where Cristola gets caught out in his own, you can't allow yourself to be taking 1v2s at any point. Because if you take a 1v1, and you think you're taking a 1v1, against the send, you're never taking a 1v1. Unless it's versus Snipe Drone, always assume there is another player in the vicinity who's going to clean you up or get some shots on you. Instead, you've got to outdo a send at what they do at their best. Wolf pack together, move as a two, move as a three, and just try and outshoot them. Prioritize who you're going to be actually shooting at. Communicate. Let's shoot Seeker, for example. You've got the gamer tags above heads now. You can prioritize who you're targeting. So I want to see that from the lads. I want to see teamwork. I want to see them baiting and switching and just beating Ascend at their own game. The lads then need to box clever here. Hit them more than they hit you. Get yourself out of trouble. Legend gets a kill onto Cristola though and Quadios is also going to fall. Both Qs set to the respawn screen along with Septic who's been Eliminated Morgan, last man alive oh for a moment, God. but Legend takes Cristola. He's only after spawning right back up, but straight back into shots as he gets his wig peeled. And it's a killing spree for Legend. 16 kills to six, a 10 kill advantage. The lads need to slow it down, Dan. So confident with his sniper rifle in the position that he's taking as well, and he's going to be able to get the body shot. Gets out the no scope, thought it was going to be a double, but he's just assisting Snipe Drone here. Snipe Drone and his oh. bodyguard, a Frenchman, just seems to be the perfect way to play Halo. 20 to 6. This is an onslaught right now. I would be terrified if I'm the lads, and I'd be terrified if I'm Morgan. 0 and 6 right now. He's going to be looking at those numbers saying, I haven't got a kill yet, lads. I, I, I need to get back on the board. And I don't know if that's going to happen very soon with the way that this Legend roster and this Ascend roster are playing, especially Legend, who eventually gets shut down. And it is Morga. He can relax. He's got his kill. Taking off Goose Watch then. Morga's gotten his kill. Septic also adds another one to the repertoire. Septic gets a double kill, but is taken down by Snipe Drone. And 25 kills to 10. Now, what was a 10 kill advantage very quickly? has become 15 and we would have seen the power up getting picked up somewhere along the way perhaps a burn but we're looking towards that kill feed you're seeing two kills for ascend only one for lads and if it keeps going that way it'll be a 2-0 lead for ascend what i will say is that i was speaking about teams kind of practicing their worst game types if we historically look at the games that ascend have lost throughout online competition it's usually slayers but then you look at how they perform today they absolutely demolished Quadrant in Slayer. They are absolutely wiping the floor with the lads right now as well. It seems like maybe they've really worked on their Slayer efficiently, efficiency, ensuring that they don't drop these maps and allow the other team to get into a series. 32 to 14. I mean, I don't want to call a game over. And we've seen lads come back from, you know, a 10 kill deficit, but this is close to a 20 kill deficit. Way back when, Snipe Jones spoke about how their team weaknesses was Slayers. It wasn't necessarily anything that the French players were doing. He felt as though he was the problem. He was a little bit disjointed, a little bit off the pace from the rest of his team. Taking a look at the stats here, he's fixed that problem, Dan. 10 kills and only four deaths. With three assists, as Shady finds another face. The lads are just turtling up, putting their head between their legs here, Dan, just trying to survive. Yeah, you just, at the moment, you are curled in a ball and you're being repeatedly kicked over and over by the Ascent roster and you're just hoping that it's going to stop, that the 50 mark is going to be hit soon because there's no way you're getting back into this. Uh, uh, what? This is just, what, a 23 kill game now? Make it 24? Shady's playing like he's playing matchmaking. Get yourselves into game three. Forget about this one. This one's over. Uh, I'm calling it now. Usually I'd say, you know, a comeback could happen. Maybe there's going to be a miracle here for the lads. 
the Ascender roster are on fire right now, and they're going to close out this game too comfortably. No. I'm going to use this license Ooh. for medicine right here and right now and pronounce time of death in this layer at 10.57. It's been that dominant. 44 kills to 22 now, showing no signs of slowing down either. Only needing four more kills to solidify game number two in Ascend's favor. Now our attention's down very quickly as this game dwindles down, needing only three towards street strongholds and... That's not a game type I want to play against the Sen. Yeah, I was saying that, you know, the statistics, the history, it's all against the lads here. But I think, you know, they've got that chance. There is that possibility that they could maybe win a couple of maps here. And that belief and that confidence is starting to fade away after these first two maps. And we're witnessing a Sen at their very best. The spectacular does come through. It is one of the most one-sided Life Fire Slayer games you will see here in European Halo. And Ascend look like they are trying to make a statement Maybe the lads have just got to this point where they've got as far as they think they can get. And even they individually don't think they can beat this Ascend roster. I hope that isn't the case. You've always got to assume you can win, but they certainly look like a team who didn't have any confidence going into that game number two. It's an interesting point you raise because that was something Snipe Drone talked about last week when playing against some of the NA teams in rallies, that when you mentally think you're going to lose the game, then you've already lost the series. If you've lost it in your head before you've even touched the analog sticks, then you're in big, big trouble. And you'd hope that's not what's been happening. It's not what's transpired here for the lads. A player, I've overachieved or in a tournament or overachieved what people would expect, where you've, you've got that upset, you've beaten a team that's a higher seed than you, and you then get into a scenario where you're playing a team that you maybe weren't expecting to play. And you're playing a team that definitely should beat you. When you go 2-0 down and you're getting hammered like this, it's very easy for your mind to go, oh, that's all right, we've got top two. Who cares? Like, it doesn't matter what happens at this point. You need to either take that and say, look, we've got nothing to lose. Let's throw everything at them here and at least give them a game. We cannot afford to just roll over, show our belly and give them a 3-0 here. Game three then of your grand finals. Ascend on match point like they have been so often before. They've never and have never lost an online tournament in Europe since October 2020. And they don't look like doing things that, that way today. They've already got two maps on the board, needing just one more. Two strongholds, though, in favor of the lads. They're looking good at early doors here. The lads have got to match the speed of Ascend. We know Ascend like to play strongholds fast. They will go from A to C to B, and they rotate as a team, consistently pushing you off spawn, always looking to try and take that advantage of any sort of situation where they have that extra player. But the lads can do exactly the same back to them. And if they manage to get Ascend on that spawn cycle, if they're the ones who have got control of the two strongholds and they're consistently scoring, they can really put a big chunk of points on the board and do some damage to this Ascend roster. But we know that Ascend always have that capability of getting back into a game. In previous strongholds games, we've seen them go 170 points unanswered. That's the capability they have. They have been in situations before against the ropes, particularly in strongholds, but they've been down by 170 points to maybe 110, particularly against Quadrant and the likes Navi. They always seem to come back, they battle back, they find that extra gear, they find that extra speed. Shady gets a kill, but Morgan answers back there. It's gonna be three dead momentarily. Sika, the last man left alive. So Although the lads are down on strongholds for the moment, they're starting to transfer C in their favor. No contest coming through just yet. Morgan giving up A. The priority is staying alive here and being a factor on the map. C's going to transfer over towards Ascend, but the lads are also going to take back A. Trip cap for in effect for the moment. Snipe drone and boys spawning towards PD. Morgan respects that, tries to back down, ultimately loses his life. Rockets though in the hands of Quadios. They're all out, but the damage is done. Grisola, last man alive, but three members up for a stand. He has it all to do. Again, we can go back to my point of, you know, certain maps just benefiting players in a different way. Morga, who was struggling a little bit in the previous, I mean, the whole team was, I guess, but he certainly was highlighted not having many kills, whereas now he is the leading slayer on his team. He just seems to be more at home here on streets. But as I was saying that, all three strongholds were turned in favor of Ascend. That's one thing Ascend do really well, Jersey, is that when they are trip capped against them, they usually overturn it and get a trip cap of their own. They don't usually just get one and then push in and get the second. They seem to like flood themselves and spread themselves around the map, take 1v1s and 2v2s and somehow trip cap, but the lads have done exactly the same back to them here. Morgan then performing 
a little better on the streets. Perhaps it agrees them a little bit more like Dan said. The problem is Ascend. Born and raised on these streets. Molded by them. Down by a couple of strongholds for the moment. They're looking to change that here. Arcade going in their favor. Zepta gets in, puts his body on the line. Does enough damage there. The reset hasn't come through yet, but Cristola has gotten the kill. Reset will eventually come to pass. Seek and Legend trying to push up red. Unfortunate for them. It's going to lead to nothing but murder. Cristola puts some shots down. Gets that kill onto Legend as well. Killing spree for him. He means business now all of a sudden. Well, maybe some of these lads players are kind of gentlemen in the sheets, but freaks in the streets from what I'm seeing at the moment. This seems to be a far more comfortable map for them. And Ascend, even though I said it's one of their best game types, I talk about this crux. And maybe, you know, there are certain teams that match up well against others and play styles. It seems like lads have found something here. And if they can take this momentum, if they can continue this run, win this map, what would that say to the Ascend roster? Ascend roster who know they're good at strongholds. Second set of rockets then. In control of the Dutchman, Morga. Fires it towards B. That's going to be enough to get the reset. He's got one rocket left. Pops that player down to no shield. Challenges it again. The confidence flowing through his veins. But Legend says no. But four dead now. Tri triple cap still in effect for the lads. Scoring all the while. I mean, how have the lads just gone from being absolutely embarrassed on Live Fire Slayer to then playing like this and matching Ascend and actually making Ascend look fairly average on this game type? I've heard some of the US pros say that this game type is just a Slayer. And it's just a Slayer where you pick up objective on the way and you've just got to make sure you're winning your fights, you're running as a team. Well, right now, lads are proving that if that is in it, actually how this is played. They seem to have found the right method, the right rhythm, and that is outslaying Ascend, putting some serious time on the board, and continuously backstabbing, pushing the extra stronghold, going for that trip cap as Cristola gets another one. I love that as well from Cristola, recognizing three members getting C and rotating over towards Red, and he gets himself a lovely little backstab there. C, though, still in contest. Septic and Legend gonna trade lives. Shady in the respawn screen. We've seen Seeker trying to get this A stronghold. He's going to get assault rifled in the back though and Morgan making sure he sends the Frenchman packing. Couple of shots at the Shady. going to back him down back towards C. Player dies in red. Cristola gets himself two kills. That's going to help their cause no end. I love this from Morgan. Turns his attentions back towards back tower. Realizing the spawns could come towards cafe but no, they're in C and a couple of slayers go in their favor. I mean, we speak about comebacks, right, for Ascend, and can they get all those points that the 170 unmatched point comeback they had against Quadrant? They're potentially going to need something similar here against the lads who have found themselves with such a huge lead, but they have to make this count. They have to capitalize from the situation they find themselves in now, because if they allow Ascend back into the game, we know full well if you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. They are going to get back into it. So lads got to keep that pressure up, keep that confidence, keep challenging this Ascend roster, say, you know what? We're not scared of you. We will take these fights. We've got nothing to lose. We want to make a series of this. No, the meanwhile, the lads did get their hands on the third set of rockets in succession. Although, possession did transfer over towards Snipe Drone. He was able to put it to good use. The lads are starting to score again now. They've got C and B. And also getting a couple of kills over here towards A. We could see a potential triple cap very quickly here as... We're seeing Ascend spawning up back down towards Station and the fight, no doubt, is going to rumble on. But 200 point threshold now, the lads have just passed through, with C finally getting put under control of Ascend. Morgus set up out here towards C, and they're putting the pinch on now, the collapse is coming through. This is exactly what you want to see. Keep them under pressure, don't let them out, give them nothing for free. Now, I'm not a biased caster but I'm very happy with what's happening right now because it means we've potentially got a series here. I think viewers should be happy as well, but no one is going to be happier than the lads with how they are currently performing. 214 on the clock and they are still scoring. Their constant rotations, their... It's, it's messy, right? There, there's not much structure to it. It's just very simple of we push this together, we kill, we push again, we kill. It's almost caveman-like, but it's working because that's how Ascend play this game type and the lads are matching them every single stride and they are so close to winning this game and taking us to a game four. Slowly then, tipped over 225 points. Very good, very nice as Snipe Drone is in the respawn screen. Very good, very nice. 
Very there it is. good. Very nice. Is that what you Very meant? Good. Is that what you that meant? That's exactly say? what I meant. And I'm glad that you've done that for me. Done that perfectly. But see, is transferring over towards the send. Cristola, the only man in the respawn screen for the lads. So they've got a full complement of players here. That's going to be game three going towards the lads. All of a sudden, Dan, we've got exactly what you ordered. A series on our hands. I was counting them out. I was saying that, you know, like it's so easily mentally to just accept that this series is over for the lads, but they had to take that and fuel, uh, allow it to fuel them in this game three. And it really did. I think they just got a kick up the bum and they said, what are we doing? Like we're scared against this Ascend roster. Why should we be? We've already overachieved when you look at what actually we did in this tournament. Why don't we go up one step further? Let's be confident in our individual fights. Let's challenge where they don't expect us to challenge. Let's be the team that they don't think that we are. And, you know, maybe it was a poor performance from the Ascend roster. I mean, Shady and Legend, how many times have you ever seen them drop negative scores like that? Both of them, negative 13, really struggling to keep up with the pace of what the lads did. But now the lads, they need to push on from this. They need to take this and fuel it even more so that they can, you know, go to a game five and who knows, maybe do the unthinkable and take us to a bracket reset. Quarter past 12, so we're already into the next day for them. They want to make sure that they finish it. They don't want to be going into a reset because then suddenly different things start to come into the equation as to fatigue and whatnot. So for the lads, get the job done here and take it to a game five. But for Ascend, they, they have to finish it. If this goes to a game five, the lads are going to be full of confidence. The issue I have here and now is that Live Fire Oddball was a game type that the lads played against Navi only a few brief moments ago. And unfortunately for them, they found themselves on the receiving end of a 2-0 hammering. 200 score to 100. So it was significant enough. It was consistent enough. That they have their work cut out for them here. This isn't Navi. This is a step above. Cream has risen to the top. You're in the big leagues playing against the Send in Grand Finals. And you've got to get the job done here and now. Seeker with the heat wave is going to absolutely shred through, get the double kill, but Septic is there to clean up the pieces like a janitor sweeping on through with his broom and he's juggling those weapons to try and bring them to someone else, but unfortunately he ran straight into the entire Ascend roster who had spawned towards Garage. Maybe he was hoping that his team would be spawning over on that side and now Snipe Drone going to do exactly the same thing. He's going to be playing with the heat wave and he's going to make it work. How nice of the lads then. Maybe the Amazon delivery driver wasn't around the snipe drone finds the body of Morgan. Both those weapons gifted to Ascend. And the last thing you want to do is gift the goodies over to Ascend. They'll make you pay. And snipe drone's doing just that here and now. Here comes the juggles again. Everyone just doing their best clown impression to see if they can get those power weapons away from the other team. And now Ascend has you quite rightly give us a little bit of a theme tune from the circus. Instead of managed to set up quite healthily over here. Managed to get the ball to back tower, but it's going to be a question of whether the lads have got what it takes to break that setup. Septic then. Last man alive. As you can see, Shady desperately trying to find him. And he's Ooh. located him, but Septic finds the skull of the Frenchman and blows him out of live fire. The kiss of death. Will that be enough then to catapult his team? Starting to score a little bit here with it. Poor man set up over towards Terror, but unfortunately two slaves go against them with Morgan, Cristola, and now Septic meeting his faith the death screen. Quadios, last man alive. 16 seconds now, and climbing for Ascend. Well, shots coming from across the map to try and at least do some damage to Legend, but notice how he keeps peeking to give as much information as possible to his team, and camouflage is up as well, but neither team will really want to give up this current state to go for the camo. It's not as influential as you think it would be, in these environments, it's more influential in a situation where the team is heavily set up and you've not been able to break it. But in that current scenario where actually trades were being going back and forth between the two teams, it was just a case of whoever won the trades would then pick up the camo. It is Morga, but he gets shut down. Something we're seeing through the POV of Legend as well. A few little jitters and I'm wondering if perhaps his network connection isn't doing too well right now. And perhaps that is why Ascend have opted to tell him to hold onto the ball, because that is the most effective he could possibly be. Big beatdowns come down, but the, the Frenchman gets the better of the Dutchman at this time. Legend taking down Morga. And almost put, just tipping over the 50 point threshold now, Aris Looking comfortable while doing it too. Have lost two members in the process though. 
We will see a play ball very shortly, you would think. But this, the lad's push isn't coming very quick here, Dan. Yeah, it needs to be a little bit faster. Septic does eventually at least get some damage. We'll take down Legend, but all the meanwhile, the ball was still... Taken. Ball 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 taken.
take it. Ball, take it. Ball, take it. Ball carrier, kill. Ball taken. I've lost a series since October 2020, which we've been mentioning quite a few times in this broadcast. So the lads have to try and do something a little bit different to try and upset that. Guardios, the last man alive here. They haven't got too much time left here. Tournament life on the line. 25 seconds is all that separates them. Between going home and perhaps some glory. Ascend. Closing ever so closer now. Towards that finish line. Crawling. 90 seconds. The lad's push just isn't coming quick enough here, Dan. They've been able to swell and stop the push. Quadios has managed to get back Terry. He's leaked through, but he's been able to milk his life a little bit longer. Sika gets the job done. Game four goes the way of Ascend. They're your grand champions once more. They do it time and time again. And I thought maybe, you know, it might have been different today with Na'Vi getting a couple of maps and the lads showing a little bit of front, well, a lot of promise on street strongholds. But unfortunately, it is just the same old story. Ascend to topple European Halo. Uh, apologies if there were any audio issues during that game, but at least you were able to witness the gameplay, which was just an Ascend route once more. Live Fire seems to be the map for them, Jersey. I know we, we were talking in Rally about Optic and how they'd never lost Live Fire. Well, maybe Live Fire is comfortable here for this Ascend roster as well. It's just the way they rotate as a team and how uncomfortable they make other teams on the map by constantly pushing those spawns keeping them on that spawn cycle. Yeah, we also spoke about how on the flip side of things, as good as Ascend, look on live fire. It's almost a complete flip of fortunes for the lads. They've lost this game type on this map in some way, shape or form. Team twisted to Navi and now indeed Ascend. So plenty of work for them to do during the week to bounce back here and figure out exactly why these pieces aren't lining up and what the problem is and where the issues do lie. But they definitely show that they can compete and they can hang with the likes of Ascend Making top two, make no mistake about it, is a monumental achievement for this roster.